So, what we're going to look at now are thermochemical equations. Now, thermochemical equations are very, very similar. They're only very slightly different to our basic straightforward chemical equations. A thermochemical equation is in fact simply a chemical equation which is accompanied by a value for the change in enthalpy of the reaction described by the chemical equation. So if we have an, a, chemical, a chemical equation where A reacts with B to produce products C and D, then the thermo, this is the chemical equation for this reaction. The thermochemical equation is written by simply adding on that the change in enthalpy for this reaction is a certain number of values, a certain number of kilojoules per mole. And so when we have this unit of kilojoules per mole, that kilojoules per mole means that uh, if if the number if the coefficients in the, this reaction represent the number of moles of each substance, then that is the number of kilojoules that will be released. So, for example, if the reaction has coefficients that look like this, if those are our coefficients, then if we have x kilojoules per mole, then that means that if we react two mole of A with three mole of B, then we will produce x kilojoules. Of energy. So the kilojoules per mole doesn't mean kilojoules per mole of reactant A. It means kilojoules per mole in the sense that if every coefficient represented the number of moles of, the, of each substance, then we would release this number of kilojoules. So kilojoules per mole here means that if we have two mole of A reacting with three mole of B, then we'll release x kilojoules of energy. And so there are a few things to be aware of when uh, when we're sort of manipulating or looking at different types of thermochemical equations. So if we take an example here, and we look at the reaction between nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Now it's, it's even more important in thermochemical equations than it is in regular equations to include the states of matter. And this is because if we in fact write an equation with, with a different state of matter, different with a different state of matter then our value for the change in enthalpy will in fact be different the the val our value for delta h depends on the states of all of the substances in our equation so if we look at the production of ammonia like this and we have a delta h value of negative 91 kilojoules per mole. So what does this mean? This means that if one mole of nitrogen reacts with three mole of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia, then 91 kilojoules of energy will be released. And we know that the energy will be released because of this negative sign here. So that means that energy is being released. Remembering that delta H is uh, the difference between the enthalpy of our products and the enthalpy of our reactants. And so if the enthalpy of our products is less, meaning that energy is being released in this equation, then the enthalpy of our product minus the enthalpy of our reactants will be a negative number, which is what we've got here. So if our delta H value is negative, it means energy is being released. And what that means is that we've got an exothermic reaction because energy is being released, energy is being exhaled, you could say, and so we have an exothermic reaction. Now, if we wanted to perhaps change this equation slightly so that we were dealing with different coefficients, how would that change the thermochemical equation? So if we rewrote this as two, nit two nitrogen molecules react with six hydrogen molecules to produce for ammonia molecules, what what happens? Well, this equation is the exact same equation as the equation above. It's just written in a slightly different way. We just don't have uh, the simplest the simplest form of the equation. We just don't have the simplest form of the ratio between our reactants and products. However, the reaction is still exactly the same. Now, because our coefficients are doubled, we now our delta H now has to show the change in enthalpy for the reaction if we have two moles of nitrogen and six moles of hydrogen. 
And so evidently that's twice as much as we have up here. So our delta H is going to be twice as much as it is above. Now the last thing that we need to understand is that if we have a reverse reaction, so if we write the first equation, that should be a two. If we write the reverse equation like this, what happens to our thermochemical equation? What happens to our value for delta H? Well, this time we still got the same. We're still dealing with the same the same particles. However, the difference in energy is now of the opposite sign. So we've still got the, the magnitude of the difference in enthalpy between our reactants and products is the same as it is in the first equation because we've got the same reactants and products. However, up here, energy is being released, so we have a negative. But now, the reverse is occurring and energy is being absorbed. So that means that we have to change our delta H to a positive. So it's positive, so we can describe this reaction as an endothermic reaction. And so simply if we're writing the reverse reaction, the reverse equation, then we need to change the sign of our change in enthalpy value. So let's look at an example down here. We're burning 12.6 grams, we've burnt 12.6 grams of ethane and we've released 653.9 kilojoules. And we want to write a thermochemical equation for that. Well, for a thermochemical equation, we need the chemical equation and the value for the change in enthalpy. So first we'll find the change in enthalpy. So we need a value for the number of kilojoules released per mole of ethane that burns. So if we've got 12.6 grams of ethane, then we want to figure out the number of mole of ethane. So the mole of ethane is going to equal the mass of ethane divided by the mole of mass of ethane. Now the, the, uh, the molecular formula for methane is for ethane, sorry, is C2H6, and so ethane has a molar mass of 30 grams, and so we have 0.42 mole of ethane. Now, if we're releasing 653.9 kilojoules for every 0.42 moles of ethane, then how much energy we're we releasing for every mole of ethane? So our delta H is equal to 653.9 over 0.42 and that is equal to 1557 kilojoules per mole of ethane. Now when we look back we should have considered this earlier but we're releasing energy so we automatically put a negative in here and a negative in there. So our delta H is negative 1557 kilojoules per mole. So it's important that we write kilojoules per mole of C2H6 or of ethane to avoid confusion later on which and I'll show you now why that's important. So the next step is to figure out our chemical equation for the burning of ethane. So this is just a standard uh, equation for a combustion reaction. So if we have our ethane, we know that ethane reacts with oxygen. So for, for us to actually be able to write a thermo thermochemical equation, uh, we need to, this, this should really state that we're dealing with gaseous ethane, gaseous oxygen, and both our products are in gaseous state as well. Otherwise, of course, that could affect our value for the delta H. So if we want to balance this, we've got six hydrogens here, so we want to make it six hydrogens here. So firstly, we put a three there. However, as you may notice, having a three there means we've got three oxygens, and that means that we've got an odd number of oxygens on our right-hand side, and because we're dealing with oxygen molecules here, we're dealing with O2, we can't have an odd number on this side. So what we can do is rather than effectively having a one here, giving us six hydrogens, and a three here giving us six hydrogens, we need to make an even number of oxygens on our right-hand side. So the way that we can do this is by doubling both these coefficients. So we have two there and six there. So now I've got 12 hydrogens on either side. I've got four carbons, so we put a four there. We now have a total of 14 oxygens on the right-hand side, and therefore seven oxygen molecules on the left hand side. So that's our chemical equation. Now this is where it's important to say
that we have that our change in H is for every mole of ethane because now in our chemical equation the coefficient of methane is a 2. So that means that if, if 1557 kilojoules is released for every mole of ethane burnt then our delta H for this reaction is going to be twice that. It's going to be two times 1557. So our delta H now is going to equal negative 3114 kilojoules per mole, which really means for every if if the coefficients in our reaction represented the number of moles, then we would have 3114 kilojoules released. So here we're dealing with kilojoules per mole of ethane, and here we're dealing with kilojoules per mole uh, of equation. So if, if we have two mole of ethane, then that's what we're talking about. We've got 3114 kilojoules released for every two mole of ethane. So that's how we go about writing a thermal chemical equation. And that's a little bit about how we can manipulate them.